right, everybody. Welcome back to the Offbeat Sports Podcast presented by... We're joined by Steve Fabrizio, who's starting up his own... Uh, starting up his own basketball podcast you want to give the plug on that so everyone can check it out Yeah, absolutely uh what's going on everybody for those of you who don't know me my name is steve fabrizio um i've known cross for a couple years now and i'm here today not just to talk about offbeat and what they've been doing but i'm also starting my own podcast Uh, it's called the breakdown our first episode is may 3rd you can check us out on youtube uh instagram and twitter uh it'll probably be down in the description somewhere by the end of this but yeah i'm happy to be here happy to talk a little hoops and thank you for having me yeah no problem good to have you on um so we'll start off with some with the celtics talk so they recently they've been doing pretty damn well i mean they're uh i think it was eight and eight and three in their last uh 11 games uh, they just lost to the bulls but i mean injuries uh we'll get into that but uh what do you think some key factors uh, in this uh, this run? Yeah, personally, I haven't been able to t- catch a ton of their games specifically, but one thing that I have noticed for sure when I have been able to watch um, as of late is that they've been able to close out the fourth quarter a lot better than they've been doing uh, early on in the season. You know, they've had a lot of ups and downs this year for sure, but we saw in a couple big games that they played against some quality teams that they really closed out well in the fourth. They've had some. They've been a team of slow starts for sure, and they've had been, been a team of... Uh, lackluster finishes if you will but I mean if you look at that game against Golden State right you're playing against the hottest guy in the league and Steph and you were able to close that game out playing efficiently playing together that den- that run they went on against Denver that I believe was 31 to 8 it was a huge run against one of the best teams in the West regardless of whatever the standings say I don't care that Denver team is very quality so I think the biggest thing that stood out to me so far in these last couple of games um, with the exception of Chicago but you know it's the NBA you're going to lose some games is the way they've been able to close out in the fourth for sure yeah, definitely. Uh, it's like, and you look at the Lakers game. I, I think it was that game where the third, the third line came in and kind of screwed it. But the starters were end up come back in after sitting for a little while and still get the job done. Finish that game off, win it, um, which was huge. Which was good. It was a good look. Um, I mean, that bull, I, I I hate to talk about that Bulls game because it's just not. It, we were missing four out of our top seven guys, so like it's hard to talk about that game like negatively. Um, but uh, my biggest thing is when um, when I'm watching the Celtics now, like now, uh, and seeing their recent success, their assist numbers are way up. Um, I, I think I think I saw it was like they were averaging twenty like twenty seven assists per game in the month of April so far, and and that's just like that that's good numbers. We need to keep it up because the problem with my problem with the Celtics when they were struggling, and I I, I stood by this, and it made me want to freak on like Tatum and stuff. I was one of the crazy ones saying trade Tatum, but like it made me hate watching Tatum play was he would just go ISO ball one-on-one try and go hero ball. He's a great ISO player, but when you do it every time it's, you're not, it's not going to work. So I, my biggest thing was they started to get that ball movement. They started to get like Robert Williams involved. And I think, I think that really, really helped their assist numbers and the way they were just playing it overall. Yeah, absolutely. I think at the NBA level, you're going to have to understand that the game is so different than at any other level. So many guys are going to be able to put the ball on the ground and just look at their defender and say, I'm better than you and score. And Tatum's a guy that the way he's played growing up, watching him, I'm a huge Duke guy as well. So I've watched him even since he was coming in in high school, having to understand like, oh, who they're going to, who we're going to get this year. And then having come into Boston, I've been able to follow his career a pretty decent amount. And he does put, he does like to do his own thing. He does like to attack on his own. And he does really go at guys as an ISO player. But like you said, the key, the key to basketball in my eyes is constant movement, constant moving the basketball and just playing together. And the Celtics, when they do that, it's two completely different teams. So like you said, when the assist numbers go up, they're bound to win games. And I think it takes some time, too, when you add in a couple new guys. I know we're going to talk about Jabari in a little bit, but like Fournier as well, having to give Robert Williams a bigger role with Tice hitting the road. Uh, Luke Cornett, like all these new guys, you're going to have to understand they don't really know initially how to play with their new teammates and stuff. But the way you're going to get, excuse me, the way you're going to get that chemistry even quicker is by just moving that ball. So I agree 100% that the, when they move the ball, they're a whole, totally different team. Yeah. And like, when you think, like, when you think about it, so like just moving the ball and just, like Kemba, Kemba gets more opportunities, which makes teams fear him too, which will open up the floor for the other guys. And if you're just constantly moving the ball, the teams aren't going to be able to catch up. That's like, that was, that's like the, that was the huge thing with, um, like the good Warriors teams, they were able, even though they had the stars, they moved the ball really, really well, which got open shots for everyone. And that's why they, that's why they were so dominant in those years. And I, and I think like, 
and I think Brown and Tatum are actually starting to mesh better because like they were like they were a duo, but like they were they're also just kind of like playing their own separate games. And now I feel like they're feeding off each other, which helps a lot. And you can see it in the, these like the recent success they've had. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you talk about guys that I believe Tatum and Brown were the two I mean, in terms of players that playing like duos that lead the league in scoring. I read a statistic about a week ago that they were number one in the league. And you got to think about all the ter- terrific duos. I know AD and Le- uh, LeBron are, have their injuries. and But you got to think about the two of them being able to be the top two scorers for a tandem in the league, closely followed by Zion and Brandon Ingram. Um, it's pretty impressive. And I think, again, like we said before, they can do a lot of things on their own. But when they play together, you see what they do. It's really difficult to stop when they're on together. Just yeah, getting those stretches for longer periods, I think, is obviously the key. But that comes again with ball movement, player movement. Things and like this that. is probably a bold statement. But, like, when they move the ball and I'm watching them, I'm like, this looks like a championship caliber team. Like, this looks like a team that could actually give the Nets a series. Maybe not beat them, but give them a series. Yeah, because- I th- I think what we're going to see when the playoffs come is going to be something very similar to what we saw in March Madness. I don't know the college game, or I don't know if you follow the college game as, as you do the yep. NBA, but this year what we watched, we, well, we all kind of knew it was going to be that championship game at the end of the day, but we, we sure as hell did not know how it was going to get there. Right. So I think at the NBA this year, I think it's safe to say a lot of people are betting on this Lakers Nets final, but I don't know who's going to give them those challenges to get there the hardest. You know what I mean? Like what teams are really going to push them to get to that spot. And I really think it's safe to say that, the Celtics do have an opportunity to be one of those teams to push Brooklyn, but it's going to be very difficult to beat a star set of core like that. But I absolutely understand what you're saying. Yeah. And I mean, I feel, all right, I'll get into it in a sec, but, uh, but like, yeah, like you said, it's going to be incredible. Like just watching how they get there. Cause I think the Celtics need to stay in the four to five spot. Um, they or, and can't go up to three or can't go to six because then they screw themselves. Cause then they'll have to have the net second round. They need to stay at the four or five. So they end up with a six or second round. Or uh, and I think they can beat the Sixers in a seven-game series. I, I just the Sixers getting their their head, heads in the playoffs against us, and it's it's just like every year the Sixers fans are like, oh, we like we dominated you during the season, and then we kill them in the uh, the postseason. It's like, I think I would love to see them second round. I think we could actually beat them in like five or six. Um, and yeah, then- I think yeah, I think definitely the only thing with that's been different than with this Philly team than teams of the past against this Celtics team, or what I should say is the Philly series. If we were to get them, I think the thing that's different from series in the past is I think Embiid's taking his game to a whole other step, and I unfortunately think our post defense is just taking a step back than it has in years past. So I think it's going to be really it's going to be really difficult to stop a guy like that when he's playing at an MVP caliber level. No matter what you really say, the guy's well, doing it. He's doing it all for them too. But I think it's gonna. It, it would. I'd rather them than Brooklyn. I'd rather them than Milwaukee in the second round too. We'll have to see. I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, we lost with that last game. We lost to the Sixers. We lost by ten with a brand new team, and we had Cornet guarding him. And yeah, man. Like Not we in sure. Ty, Tice. Say what you want about Tice. He did. A, he always did a good job on Embiid because he he just played strong against him. And that, that was huge for us. And I think like, and I think that loss, like coming right off, like coming right off, like uh, losing Tice and go play the Sixers. It's kind of, we kind of got confused. And I think honestly, Taco did a good job on him, but I don't think he'll play much. Uh, But I think I, and we also didn't have Tristan Thompson in that game. Very true. Tristan Uh, Thompson. The way that they were able to gain rebound on that game, they only uh, got uh, rebounded by six in a 13 point loss, but they got killed offensive glass. That's Embiid right there. Just going right up, going right up. But they got the offensive rebound. Nine to three in Philly's favor, so that's tough. Yeah. But if they can get there, if they can get guys in the glass, defend the post, and just make sure to play off their cutters from Embiid when they enter it, and not double too difficult, too hard. I mean, I really do think they can do it as well. But it's going to be a challenge for sure. And I forget who I was talking to this about, but uh, honestly, we can afford to let Embiid score forty, and we could still win if we just get out on shooters. Don't let Ben Simmons like do whatever the hell he does. If we can get, uh, like, if we can get out on shooters, make sure Seth and uh, Danny Green don't get, don't get their wide open shots and get, uh, make sure Harris isn't like looking like Clippers Harris. We could be okay. Cause like we can afford the 40 points as long as our offensive scores are on and like we do our thing. I think we can, I think we can afford that. Against yeah. The I, think, I mean, I think it's safe to say, like, like we were saying before, you don't want to, it's it's hard with the team like that now that they got Danny Green and Seth who've been shooting the shit out of it. Um, it's gonna be it's dif- it's difficult to say what you should do, but at the end of the day, Embiid's gonna get his points. 
So I kind of understand what you're saying. Like you, you almost got to let that happen and just eliminate everybody else. Cause one guy can't be you on his own. You know what I mean? It's not, it's a team game. Like we said before, the best teams are the teams that move the ball, move without the ball. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that would go. I'm excited for it though. I really think they do have a good shot, but it's going to be interesting to see where this seeding falls as the, as the season winds down. And when I go to think about like, when I go to think about um, the, like, the, uh, shoot with our matchup against the nets um mm. like i think we're gonna we'll probably lose that series but they don't they don't have the depth so i think like if katie's katie's out every other day uh and harden's been the only consistent one surprisingly because Kyrie disappears whenever he wants like i don't know like hopefully they get their shit together by the playoffs because like they could be filthy and just as a basketball fan like i want to see like I, I like seeing them play because it's just it, it it's so smooth how they play but i mean for, as a celtics fan i'm like this is great watching yeah. them just disappear every once in a while because if they were always there i mean they'd be they, they'd be first in the east easily um, you're talking about but, you're talking about brooklyn yeah yeah so yeah. like okay so when we're matching up against them, I see like if they don't have any lineup consistently, like they don't have the depth to like to keep it go- like to to win a seven game series with it, with like one or two of those guys being out throughout that series. Like so and like KD, KD, great player, one of the like arguably the greatest scorer of all time. Right? If that, That's like a different argument, but. Like if he if he's so, yeah. hurt, like he could get hurt any night, like and and you don't know, like and yeah. you know it, I just yeah. yeah I don't know I think I think like we can match up well against them and I if think we get I think Easter it's it's tough them. it's tough to say that anybody truly matches up well with a team like that you know what I mean but I think the thing is that stars are the ones that really win playoff games unfortunately and I'm not gonna knock anything that Kyrie and James Harden and Kevin Durant can do on the basketball floor because they're just savants when they get the ball in their hand. My question becomes with them, the perimeter defense, if it's going to be able to hold up over time. Because as much as when they want to turn it on, they can't turn it on, at the end of the day, it's still the NBA. It's going to take you a second to get adjusted. So for Kyrie and Harden, even though they're just offensive savants, the de- the perimeter defense is the thing that scares me if I'm Brooklyn because obviously they can score when literally whenever they want to. So that's the thing that's going to do it for me. And with, with a Boston matchup, like we said, our great scorers are on the perimeter and on the wing. Right. Kemba, when he can turn it on, can really go off that dribble pull up and really attack the rim well when he want when he can do that little stop and go action. It's been phenomenal. We know what Brown and Tatum can do with the ball. Right. So it's just a matter of if that matchup were to occur, how can we exploit the weaknesses on the perimeter in my eyes? I think too. It's it's interesting. And you gotta think for Brooklyn's depth, the fact that Dinwiddie can't even get in. Like he he's really I mean, I don't even know how many games he's played this year. He could can't he can't couldn't have played a lot before he got that little injury. But I mean, we will see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how they adjust. At the, at the six right now, Boston is? He's played three games. He's played – exactly, played three games, right? So, Terrible. with a guy like that, you'd have to imagine this this season changed completely on its head. So, let, let's let's see. Where are they, They're matched up at six right now, right? So, the three six is Milwaukee, too. I don't know. What do you, Would you rather have Philly? Would you rather have Brooklyn? Or would you rather have Milwaukee in the, fir- in the first round? If you're going to go – forget the four or five for a second. If you get a six – one of those teams because they're all within three games of each other, three and a half games of each other. I, part Ooh, of me want wants to say Milwaukee. Part of me wants to say Milwaukee. So do so do, so do I. Um, but I I don't know why I really really like our matchup against the Sixers, especially in the playoffs. When we play the Sixers in the playoffs, it's a completely different environment, and I I love I love that matchup just as like I do too. Just as a fan, just as a like fan, yeah, yeah. But I yeah. mean, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting rivalry. We've been they've been able been able to build the last couple of years for sure. So I, yeah, selfishly, if we get stuck at that sixth spot, I think that would be the one I want to watch, but it's going to be interesting to see if they can sneak their way into that four or five. Because well, I think I'm we can because against we New York or Atlanta, to be honest well, with you. We don't, Miami's we don't, right there too, but we have a pretty good schedule for the rest of the season. Other than the game, the game that's happening right now against the Suns, which they're winning right now, but uh, um, they, um, they yeah, got six, six games left, two against Charlotte. San Antonio? Uh, no, they got they got a ton of games left. Um, I'm, I'm in the month of April. In the month of April. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. I'll so go they got month by month. <laughs> so they got <laughs> Phoenix. Bad. They got Phoenix and Brooklyn, which two right tough there. two tough games. But yes. K- KD is still questionable for tomorrow, and I don't know if I don't know if Kyrie's playing. But um, then you got Charlotte, which should be a win. OKC, Charlotte again, San Antonio, Portland, Orlando, Chicago, two Miami, 
uh, two or two versus Miami, Cleveland, Minnesota, New York. I would say yeah, they split seven and seven home and away. So it's tough to say. Yeah, to say. I would say the, the, that part out of there. But the only questionable games, I would say, like, I mean, that I think like are like can maybe considered losses is maybe we we'll split against Miami. Uh, maybe Portland, but I, I doubt it. And then I like their I like the, the way the Celtics match up with Portland personally. Dame is my favorite yeah. player to watch in the league. I like the way the Celtics match up with Portland. Yeah, I do too. They they beat them the last they beat them the other night. Um, mm-hmm. but then you get in maybe the Knicks because we've lost against the Knicks before this season. But I don't I don't know why we I don't think we should lose to the they're Knicks. Playing, they're playing great basketball though, man. Let me tell you, that's a team where I know we talked about that four or five. That will be a very entertaining series. I think I think that goes seven the way that the Knicks are playing right now. Julius Randle is a problem with the basketball in his hands, mm-hmm. and it's a very. I think the Celtics are a better team at the end of the day. But the, they're they're on a hot they're on a hot street. They're playing well. They're playing together. Julius Randle's lead and the catalyst. Well, the team, right now. the team that surprised me that I did, I uh, honestly didn't even realize was doing that well this season of the Hawks. I didn't even notice they they shot up ahead of us like they yeah. they shot up ahead of us the, like last week uh, when we were in the five uh, we were in the fourth spot and then we dropped back down to the five because they went up. But I mean, that, not being an All Star is criminal. Yeah, criminal. I mean, I mean, I I don't know. I think they're surprised. I think they'll probably drop down a, a couple spots uh, by the end of the season. But I mean, you look at some of the teams that aren't like are not even in the playoffs like Wizards, Pacers right now. Raptors aren't even in the play-in tournament. Yeah. Like, that's that's going to that's going to that's going to be interesting to see that little play-in tournament. I'm not a huge fan of the idea personally, but I it's just going to be very interesting to see how the playoffs shape from those. Well, I know? think it's a money it's a money grab. Oh, it's of definitely a money grab. Of course. I mean yeah. everything everything they do is right, for the money. Is, I mean yeah, it's pro sports. Yeah, it's how it's going to yeah. be. But I I'll tell you what, the second I saw Gallinari and Bogdanovich head to Atlanta, I said I, my preseason prediction for them. It's not written down anywhere, but I'll take my word for it. I, I had them at I had them at five. I had I had them at five. So I really think that I really think that they are talented and complete team with the two complete more complete team than they've been with the two of them in the roster. I'm yeah, I think when I was doing my play. I think when I was doing my pregame prediction, I had them at like eight or nine. I think. Yeah, fair enough. Um, fair enough. Uh, and uh, but like. They they've shown up like I didn't even have the Knicks anywhere close to where they are. No, I mean, and and, and I didn't even have Thibodeau. I didn't have the Sixers in first. I I thought I ha, I think I had them below the Celtics. I thought the Celtics were going to be much better, uh, yeah. which I think everyone did. Which we can transition this because I think they would have been much better without the injuries. We can transition to the in- injuries now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, we talking about injuries this year. We've we've had Tatum go out with COVID. We've had half the team go out with COVID, but. Um, like talking about big ones, Tatum out with COVID. Brown's been in and out with knee injuries, non-COVID illnesses. I think he had COVID at some point. Like he, he's he's out of all. Uh, so and he's out tonight. And I don't know how what his status is for tomorrow, but yeah, I mean uh, it's it's unfortunately playing that you you and I both played the game for a decent played the game for a decent amount of time, and I'm I'm still playing. But we 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 know that it's. It's a game that anything is really, it's really unpredictable with injuries. You know what I mean? I mean, they've had 50, 58 games they've played now. Who's, who's played the most games out of anybody? 53 out of Brown, mm-hmm. which yeah. I mean, nothing, which is like, you usually have a guy who's plays all 82. You know what I mean? They, they don't have that this year. Pritchard is their guy that's played the second most tied with Tatum at 52. And Brown's right there at 53, which isn't crazy. Like they got, they got, you know, their COVID games, a couple t- tweaks here and there, but Kemba barely played to start the season. He's only played about half the games. Marcus has only played about half the games with his long stretch that he was out. And then a bunch of guys who have been, haven't played that many games in the Celtics uniform. Like we talked about before, Fournier, Cornette, Jabari, stuff like that. So it mm-hmm. definitely sucks that you can't get a cohesive, eight out on the floor together well for, that was our huge problem in the beginning because we yeah. were rolling in the beginning of the season i think we were first in the, i think we were second in the league behind the lakers first in the east uh and then covid hit and it just went to everything went to like shit and we couldn't yeah, get a consistent lineup yeah. and it was just like what the hell's going on like everyone was like oh trade like everyone blow it up but like i was just like once we get a consistent lineup we'll look better and you've seen more of that over the last 11 games is more consistent lineups. And now like you're starting to see more guys go out, which is kind of scary. But I mean, I think we'll, I think once we get, I think honestly, most of this, I think is like just regular season stuff. And like, if it was playoffs, they'd probably play. And yeah, I mean, yeah, 
Continuous yeah, arc. and you like you got like Kemba has been like in and out. He hasn't been able to play back to back nights yet. Like still, uh, Smart is back tonight, but he was out last game. Uh, Rob Williams has been out lately. Uh, Fournier is still out. He should be back soon though. Tristan Thompson had a stretch where he was out. Like we can't, we you can't get a consistent lineup. And I think I saw we were like our like in the beginning when we had like our actual starting lineup it was like with Tice and stuff. They played together like maybe like a total of like thirty minutes through like thirty games, and it was like that's not good. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, I mean, playing the game of basketball is so important. What playing in the game of basketball, it's so important to have chemistry, like we said on the court. It's going to help with all the things that gets winning teams to win games, like playing together, moving the ball, stuff that we've been preaching on this whole time, stuff that I preach on, especially. Um, it's really difficult to do that without a consistent lineups on the floor. So I think as the season winds down here, if these guys that have just come in start to figure it out a little bit, I think they, I think it's safe to say that they have a good shot of making a little little run here i don't know how deep it can go but i i I could see it going into it at most at least the first round obviously but conference finals if they really start to put it together i don't understand i don't know why that wouldn't be an option for them well because they're i mean they're definitely going to be underseated they're definitely going to be underseated because the soft season or this uh regular season has been weird and Yeah, yeah without question they have talent they have talent to be a top four team in the east they absolutely have the talent to play that way as well so i mean they're probably well, not going to get a home court. It's just the way that it's going, the way that New York's on a roll, and the way that Atlanta's been surging a little bit. Um, I, I imagine one of them probably gets the four over the way, these guys. But it's going to be interesting to see that little playoff matchup, who, who they're going to get, who they're going to run into. And when I'm, like, when I'm talking, so, like, people are – like, I, I, I scroll through Celtics Twitter all the time, and it, like, just makes me – because some people are like, oh, trade Tatum around, like, it's ridiculous. They can't get past the Eastern Conference Finals. They're young. They're, like – what are they like 24 yeah. like yeah, 23 and 24 mm-hmm. like the, like most players don't even get to like this point but like yeah. three eastern conference finals by yeah. this this age like mm-hmm. that's that's impressive like obviously we'd all love to see that and boston fans are like w- want to win like at all costs but like if we're talking future like we're set like i mean if we can keep them together like and just fill in like the pieces around them as we go like that's great. And Pritchard has been impressive. So he's like, I'm excited for his future. Um, Rob Williams is still young. Yeah. Like the thing I've, the thing I've always said to people is a a lot, you know, as a Boston kid as well, everybody has very short temper. It can be Jalen Brown shoots the 30% back-to-back games, get him out. Like literally that's just, unfortunately that's just how people are. And I tell people that this team isn't built to win right now. It's a team that's built to win when LeBron hits the road because Quite frankly, they understand they're playing for second at this point with LeBron and now Brooklyn being who they are. Unfortunately, and they're not a place to rebuild, but they have young guys. So what they try to do, in my eyes, what it looks like they try to do is continue to compete, continue to bring out a great lineup and give every team a contest, playoff experience, build chemistry, the stuff like that. And when it's time to go, when the when that generation, the LeBron kind of created fizzles out i think that's when they'll be in the driver's seat and i think that's what their goal is as well i think that's what danny's tried to do with this roster i mean they're gonna have veterans popping in and out to give guys like teach guys explain to guys like tristan thompson's not a part of their long-term plan you know what i mean yeah like he, he's a neither is, I do like to be honest he's neither is kemba to right. be like yeah but you need those kind of guys in the locker room so you're able to compete every night you're able to teach the young guys how to play and frankly keep them apart and keep the group whole you know so i definitely think it's a team that's built to win in like 2024 2023 who's out when they're like gonna go but for now you gotta just stay the course just take what you can out of their games their wins and their losses quite frankly you know that a loss you learn more from a loss than a win even yeah let's just like enjoy level. let's just enjoy like the competitiveness they're exactly because they, they, they do they there's some night, age. yeah unfortunately this year there's been nights that you've lost this team and they don't look like very enthused and you know it's a grind of an 82 game season but when when they really want to work and they really want to compete they're one of the best teams in the league in my eyes as well. Mm-hmm. But it's just a matter of getting that for longer stretches. And hopefully mm-hmm. now that the playoffs are coming close, we can get that stretch out of them. Mm-hmm. And if we're talking about, like, new additions and stuff, we got to talk – like, Cornette, I mean, it's been a kind of a surprise low-key. I mean, we're at, when when that when that trade happened, we I was thinking, like, uh, Wagner was going to be uh, – Wagner or whatever his name is, is gonna, was going to be, like, the guy who gets in at some points. Um but Cornette's been a surprise. He's been good off the bench, pretty, like pretty good off the bench yeah. 
uh, he's actually done pretty well defensively, other other than against those like big big men like Embiid. But he shoot he shoots the ball well. He's got a smooth uh, smooth uh, outside jumper. I mean, he's getting blocks, uh, which is like better than what we could have yeah. hoped. I mean, he's not he's not a he's not a guy that's gonna come in and just wow you with what he does in the stat sheet. But he's he's a guy that does little things for for a team like this. They have guys that are gonna wow you, so you need guys to do little things. Unfortunately, he doesn't really do him to the caliber that you need. But he's only playing 13 minutes a game. So that's kind of all you really need him to do is just, you know, box out, run the rim, get the little outside jump shot when you can, um, little things like that. But, yeah, he's he's got – since he's come here, he's averaging about a block a game, three boards. He's only shooting about 42%. For a big, is not great. But at the end of the day, he's not a guy with tremendous touch per se. So Yeah. He is. But, yeah, I and think then- he, if he just continues to play his role, continues to stay the course, do a de- like a downgraded version of what Tice was so Thompson can fill his spot, that's mm-hmm. all you can really ask out of him. And then we're t- and we're for talking about like other additions. Fournier, we haven't seen much out of him, but he had that bad like first game, lot. and then he had a he had a good couple of games after that, and I, I like and then, then he went out. I I think that's huge. I, honestly, yeah. honestly, you can make the argument for him starting, but I think it's better I if he would. comes off the bench. I agree. I mean, I think they we need, need they that. need yeah. They especially, need that backup punch. Yeah, especially now, like you put. When we if we're I was looking at the bench the bench lineup the other day I mean when we're healthy so our starters will be um, Kemba Smart Tatum Brown and um, and Rob Williams and then our bench lineup looks really really good when we're healthy it's Pritchard uh, Langford who I'll talk about in a sec um, and then it's Fournier Parker and Tristan Thompson so like if you think if you think about that's a good lineup. And I think that really we're not, gonna talk the really not bad. And we're gonna talk about the Parker thing, like Jabari Parker, mm-hmm. who just got a dunk as I'm saying it. He uh, he's he's looked really. He's averaging nine point five in his two games. He had eleven and eight in his two his two first games of the Celtics. He's uh, averaging fourteen through his career. That that's gonna be good for a for a bench player for us. He's Absolutely. gonna bring he's gonna bring a little scoring spark off the bench. Uh, he could, yeah, he's, he's like a solid size dude. So like he can bring some physicality yeah. and six, eight. Yeah. Six, seven. yeah I mean, big, big I mean, he, he's a number two overall pick. I mean, yeah, for, he's, he, he's that for a reason too. You know, I talked a yeah. little earlier. Yeah. When I said I'm a Duke guy, he, he's the guy who, who got me to be a Duke guy. So I'm going to cover some magazine when he used to play for, I think it was Simeon in high school in Chicago. And he was just, I was like, Oh, who's this kid? And they looked him up and I'm like, you're 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 a dog. That's who you are. Like he was just punching on people, running, blocking shots, banging threes. He's so he was so fun to watch, and it just sucks because you watch a guy like that come up in Duke, and he had a good he had a good Duke career, but you know he was a one and done. He was supposed to play at the NBA at a really high level, and and the same thing kind of happened with Wiggins, except his wasn't really injury affiliated. But I mean, two ACL tears and a guy an explosive athlete like that sucks. So it's good to see him come into a situation, at least as a fan for me, of not only Boston but of Jabari as a player to come into a situation where he's going to be needed and his role is to just do his damn thing. And I th- off the bench, put the ball in the rim, def- defend, work hard, just do, do what you do best. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for him to do that. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds for him. And I think, and I think like he needs this kind of opportunity where the spotlight's not on him and he can, he can just kind of like, he's never really had the spotlight on him lately, but like where he's not like in a huge role, but he's in his role. And I think that uh, yeah. like, that could be important for him. It's like, just I go agree. like, at least for the, at least for this season, well, he's on a two year deal. So like he, he can help out next season too, but like he's going to be working with Fournier once Fournier comes back. And I think their, their little duo off the bench would be pretty well with mm-hmm. Pritchard, which Pritchard running the offense kind of like, playmaking for them and that could be good that could be good and i think like you'll have you'll have that that core five off the bench and then you'll have like grant williams who comes in or like semi who comes in for like situational stuff and cornet too but yeah i mean it i think i i love the signing and people are complaining about it like why are we signing this washed up over number two overall pick he's a bust but like the fuck out of here. yeah he, yeah he's a you could call him a bust for a number two overall pick but like On paper yeah, but like, like, if you you like he's a he's scoring fourteen points per game in his career. He's also twenty six. You know, yeah. there's a lot of career left to prove. Mm-hmm. Like fourteen points per game is is pretty solid. I mean, like that's better than what uh, like Wagner was doing. Like at least uh, Parker can contribute because we have, yeah. like, we didn't need a fifth big man. Like, mm-hmm. like at yeah, that yeah. point, like Jabari Parker like brings something else, and I think 
and I think that's going to really help us. Yeah, for sure. My thing, too, with their bench is they have so many guys that are versatile in terms of not only what they can play offensively, but defensively. So you talk about Semi, Grant, Jabari, Romeo even. They can all play multiple positions, and the way that Brad likes to play is just kind of positionless basketball. You just kind of, you know, you do what you do best in the basketball court. The number one, two, three, four, or five doesn't really matter, right? So they have a bunch of guys that are interchangeable. Like Grant can play the three or the four. Javari can play the three or the four. Romeo can do the two or the three, right? So all these guys being able to interchange spots, Brown and Tatum too, even though they're starters, I'm just talking off the bench. It's going to give them a lot of lineup options. If a guy has a cold night, it's going to give them a lot of leeway to be able to not not necessarily be out of the game, even if one of their better players is cold. So I think that just gives them another guy like that. And frankly, he's the best one of them off the bench. So in my eyes, it was a great pick as well, pick up as well. Uh, now we, we, you just said something about Romeo, but I want to talk about Romeo a little bit, uh, and then maybe we can wrap up, but Romeo, love him. Honestly, since he's come back, it's been different type of energy. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like he bring, he, he brings something that smart brings, but like, it's just like, it's smart brings it every night and, and everyone was already used to that. And I think Romeo bringing it kind of like sparked the guys again. And we're like, all right, let's all bring it. And, and his defense has been great. Um, he's been able to, like, match up and lock down some guys. Like, and I've been impressed. And offense, I mean, it'll come. Like, it's not great, but, like, it's not bad. And mm-hmm. and he's create his defensive um, his defensive ability is creating offense uh, of opportunities on fast breaks and stuff. So, I mean, I've been a fan. I mean, I love him. Yeah. I think everyone was a little too quick to write the ship on him personally. Um, I think a lot of people, like we talked about earlier with Boston fans, they're so quick to just yeah, quick like, trigger. Uh, fuck them. Yeah. Quick trigger. So I think with a kid like this, you watch him play at the high school level, the, at the college level at Indiana, he wasn't anything that jumped off like the page. You weren't like, like he was like the number two or three guy coming out of high school. Then he comes in as a lot of, everyone did not thought he was going to be like a top five pick drops the 14. Okay, fine. He comes to a great situation in Boston where they need some wing help off the bench. Doesn't have a great rookie year, but what he, what he, he, like Cornette, similarly, he does like the little things, right? Like you said, he's not he's not meant to go play 30 a night. He's averaging only 14 minutes a game for a reason. He gives Smart that little blow. He can defend. He can run. He can play, make exciting plays, get the fans. Unfortunately, there aren't a ton, but they're coming back. I'm living right down the street from the garden. They're coming back and give those guys something to cheer for in the stadium at home, right? So I think I think he's going to be a good player. I think it's going to have it's going to come over time, but we will see exactly how it goes. But I think. Mm-hmm. I have I, I I really do have faith in their bench over time. It's not like we said, it's not gonna happen really. Like we're not planning on they're not planning on winning right now. So hopefully soon we can really get it to go. But continue to build that core, continue to build that bench depth. That's all you can ask out of this group right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. That's all I got for Celtics talk um, right now. I, I mean, do you, I don't know if you have anything you want to cover. Yeah, no, I think we covered damn near everybody on the team. So I think I'm good, <laughs> but I, I appreciate you guys having me on. i um, been a fan of the show. So, and I'm loving what you guys are doing. So just continue to keep going and hopefully you guys will check out, the, check out the breakdown. May oh, 30. we will. Yeah. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Yeah. We'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Everyone make sure you go check them out. I'll tag them. I'll tag them when we post this. So go, uh, go check out their Instagram and the, and their YouTube, but make sure you go subscribe. Um, yeah. So thanks. Um, good, good talk about the Celtics. Um, thanks everyone for listening. Um, make sure to go follow us on Instagram and check out our socials and subscribe. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. So, uh, see ya.